Miss Clark has the following pie pieces left over from the bake sale. She will combine the pieces so that they are in the same dish. How much pie will be in the dish? So we can model the problem using these fraction circles here. Okay, so the first one, how many pieces of pie are there? In, in this, this one right here, how many pieces are left? Three pieces. Three pieces out of how many possible? Six. Six. So I'm going to go ahead and shave my three pieces. Okay. And then on the other pie, how many pieces are left? One. Out of how many possible? Six. Six. Okay. Now, if I put those all in the same pie plate, it will look something like this. I shouldn't see other people drawing yet or coloring. This is me. Okay. That's what it should look like. Go ahead and shade yours. The first pie. How much is shaded? Three. Three out of? Six. So three sixths of the pie. How much of the, what fraction of the pie is shaded in this middle one? One, one, six. six. Okay. Now we've combined both of those leftover pies into one new pie plate. Or one, maybe we moved this one over here, I don't know. But we've added them. So we have three six plus one six. What do we have then in our final pie plate? Four six. Four six. Okay. Now I can do that addition. I can do that addition without having to do the model. Pencils are down and eyes are up here. I can do that addition without having to look at the model. I see that I have three six here and one six here. I can add the pieces, which is four. Do I add the denominator? Do you notice the, is there any adding of the denominators? No, no. We're only adding the numerators. Because this is just a part. This is how many parts there are total. This is how many we had. Three parts and one part equals four parts. And the part size of the parts are one sixth. Okay, so we can add those. So how much of the pie, how much of a pie is on the dish? Four six. Four six. Is that in simplest form? Are they both even numbers? Yes. So they're divisible by two. two. So 4 divided by 2 is? 2. And 6 divided by 2 is? 3. Now, is that in simplest form, or can I reduce it further? Oops. That is in simplest form. I'm going to move this a little. There we go. OK. So now 2 thirds is really how much of the pie in, in simplest form. OK. But this is not asked us to do it in the simplest form. I'm just doing a little review for you because that will be on tomorrow's test. All right, suppose Miss Clark eats two pieces of the pie. How much pie will be left on the dish? Model the problem using the fraction circles. So the next thing we're going to do is draw a piece of, and how many pieces does she eat? Four. No, it says suppose Miss Clark eats two. So this is what two would look like. Go ahead and do that. Finish catching up. If we started with four pieces and we take two of them away, our pie will end up looking like we took these two away, so it will end up looking like this is what's left. Okay? Scoot that down. So we started with four six. We take away how much? Two. Two what? Six. I need everybody participating. And how much do we have left? Um, two, These are X's. Two, wait. Sorry. Yeah, two six. Two six, two, six left? Yeah. Okay. So how much of the pie is left? Two six. Two six. Now, again, we can do this without the models by looking. As long as the denominator is the same, the parts are the same size, you can subtract or add the numerators. You don't ever add or subtract the denominators, only the numerators. So now I have four pieces minus two pieces gives me two pieces. 
Is two six in simplest form? Yes. No. No. Give me a, ye a yes or a no. No, it is not. They're both even numbers, which means they're divisible by two. Okay, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3, that's the simplest form of 2, 6. Again, it's not asking for that here, but we're doing, we did it anyways. Kevin says that when you combine three pieces of pie and one piece of pie, you have four pieces of pie. Explain how Kevin's statement is related to the problem we just did, the equation. 3, 6 plus 1, 6 equals 4, 6. So he says three pieces of plot pie and one piece of pie, then you have if you add them, you have four pieces of pie. Go ahead in your own words, I want you to explain how that works. Because we just did it and I know you guys understand how to do it. I want you to write it in words. Go ahead and take a second and do that. All right, who would like to share what they put for the explanation of this? Just one person? Two people? Okay, Nicholas, why don't you tell us what you wrote? Because it's just like three plus one, two plus four, three plus four, and then six has six on the bottom. Okay, so you're saying that it's just like doing three plus one, so three plus one equals four, except that it has six on the bottom. What does the six on the bottom represent? The number of pieces that it started with. What's another way to explain what the the six represents? Preston. How much how much pieces were there? Okay, so how much pieces or what's I, there's another way I've been referring to it. Do you know what I've been referring to? The denominator, true. What about the size of the parts? The size of the pieces, right? Is one sixth. The six represents the size of the pieces. It's divided into six. Okay. Did anybody else want to share theirs that was different? Um, Sean. Um, it works by you keep the 6 and you just add 1 plus 3 and you add 6 on the bottom. Okay. Do you add the 6 on the bottom? You, no, you just put the 6 You just bring it over, right? Because the size of the parts doesn't change, but the number of parts does. That's the big difference when you're adding. The size of the parts doesn't change, but the number does. And that's why I want you to remember that the six represents the size of the parts. They're each a sixth of a whole. All right? Number two says, Isabel wrote the equation one-half plus one-six equals four-six. And Jonah wrote three-six plus one-six equals four-six to represent combining the, piece, the pie pieces. Why are both equations correct. They're both correct. Think about it. And then go ahead and actually I'm going to let you talk to your partners this time. Talk to your partners about why it's correct and then you each write it. Why? Okay, so you're saying that it works because this number equals this number. Okay, the um, so she's right. 3, 6 equals a half. So they're basically saying the same thing. So we know that they're saying the same thing, but are they correct? Yes. They're correct because we know that 1 half equals 3 6. So if we find a common denominator, if we find a common denominator, we can add these numbers. We can't add these two numbers <coughs> as they are. 1 half plus 1 6, we can't add them as they are. We can add them, but we can't add them as they are right now. We have to find an equivalent fraction that has a, a, the similar denominator. And if we cannot find one that has a 6 as a denominator, we have to find a common denominator. But that's another lesson. In this case, they've already found the common denominator here, saying that 1 half, if we put it into 6, equals 3 6, and that equals 4 6 because these are equivalent fractions. So because they're equivalent fractions, whatever we add to them, we're gonna end up with the same answer. Okay, number three. 
If there is four-sixths of a pie on a plate, what part of the pie is missing from the plate? Write an explanation to, I mean, sorry, write an equation to justify your answer. So, there's four-sixths of a pie on a plate. What part of the pie is missing? And write the equation that would show how to find that. We did it on the other side. Okay, so this is what Ethan did. He d Tell us what you did. Um, I put the... I put four six down, and then I circled the part that was missing. Okay, so he wrote a pie to split into six. He shaded in four, and then he circled the two that are missing. Did anybody write the equation? Because that's what I underlined. Sean, what did you write? I wrote, I wrote four six plus two plus six. And what does 6 6 equal, Sean? One hole. Or you can go a different direction. Did anybody go the opposite direction? Ronnie, did you? So, how did you represent that one hole, though? Yeah, you have to do it as 6 6 minus 4 6 equals 2 6. Okay? What's that? Oh, wait, did I do it backwards? No, there's four, six, so we're trying to find out how much is left. So we take a hole, and because we have a hole, we can make the denominator, numerator, matching numbers, whatever we want it to be. We don't have to find a common denominator. I can say two halves, I can say three thirds, I can say four fourths. I can make a hole whatever numbers I want them to be. They just have to be the same. So since I'm working with six in my pie pieces, when I make my hole, Fraction, when I represent my whole pie as a fraction, I'm going to use 6. Make it easy on myself, right? So I'm going to do 6, 6. That equals one whole pie minus the four pieces that are there shows how much is empty, how many were eaten already. Okay, so you should have one of those two formula, one of those two in there. That's the equations, when it asks for equations. If you haven't filled in one of those, go ahead and do it right now. All right, here's something that you need to think about. You can only combine, you can only combine parts of a hole that are from the same type of hole. And I don't mean a hole like a circle hole, I mean a hole like a whole piece, a whole thing. So if Randy has a fourth of a round cake and a fourth of a square cake, we cannot combine those. Are they the same size parts? No. no, they're both a fourth of a cake, but they're a fourth of different kind of cakes or different size or different shaped cakes. So we cannot add these. It doesn't work. Because if I added this one here, this is really what I'm adding. Is that truly a fourth of the square cake? No. No, it's not. So when you're doing word problems, and you have to watch for this, if they're talking about different shapes. If they're talking about a half of a banana and a half of an apple, can you really combine those to truly combine them? No, you can't. They're totally different shapes. But if you're talking about a fourth of this apple and a fourth of this apple, you may have a little bit more, it may be a little more realistic because they're, at least they're both apples. Okay. Are the holes the same? No. They have a different shape. Go ahead and write it. And on B, we've already answered that question. Go ahead and write it in your own words. All right, who would like to explain? Does the sum 1 fourth plus 1 fourth equal 2 fourth make sense in this situation up here where my pen's in the way? Does it make sense in this situation? Who would like to explain why not? We showed why. But who would like to try it in words? Daniel. Um, 1 fourth plus 1 fourth equals 2 fourth. I think that's a great explanation. Did anybody need that repeated? All right, she said that one, I'll just do it real quick. She said that one of the one-fourths is a rounded edge and one of the one-fourths is a square. So you cannot add them together to get two points. 
All right, look at the next page. Use the model to write the equation. What does the first model show you? What fraction does it show you here? Raise your hand when you know. What fraction is shown there? Three out of five, three fifths, like this, okay? What does the second fraction show, class? One fifth. One fifth. And they equal? Four fifths. Okay, look at number two. This is how a subtraction. This is how you're supposed to show it. You're supposed to circle it and put an X. So it started with what fraction? Raise your hand. How much? Two thirds. And we're subtracting how much? One third. So how much is left? One third. All right, I want you to do number three and four on your own. All right, let's do it together. What's the first fraction? One fourth. One fourth plus? One fourth. Equals? Two fourths. And simplified would be? One half. One half. All right, number four. What is the first fraction? Five eighths. What do we start with? We started with five eighths. Remember the X means subtracting. Minus three eighths, three eighths equals two eighths. Simplified? One fourth. One fourth. 